Hey everybody, this is Rich and you're with South Florida Beekeeping with Rich. And we're into swarm season. So I thought I'd go over a few ways that you can hopefully retrieve a swarm out of a tree without getting up on a ladder. So, first, my favorite way of doing it is this right here. Five gallon water jug. Cut the bottom out of it. Take a piece of aquarium tubing or a piece of water hose or whatever you got, make a slit in it, put it around the edge, a few small holes, some stainless steel tie wire to hold it all together so that when you're bumping a branch, you're not chopping the branch or, you know, cracking this up. Uh, first time I tried this, I didn't know whether it was going to work or not, but I've been using this for about three years now and I've bumped a lot of branches everything's still intact. This is the important part of it. In the throat of the bottle, you find the PVC pipe that is a snug fit inside the throat. You get a matching cap and a matching collar. Shave down the cap. Yes, dear. Uh, before you put everything together here, if you can, get a stick and put a piece of news or newspaper, piece of sandpaper on it, and kind of sand. This is where I'm doing it, but I'll point it out here. Kind of sand this sharp edge down, round it out a little bit, so that it's a more rounded fit where it intersects the tube. Because you're going to push this thing tight. You're going to first you can put some glue on the cap and the piece of pipe outside of this. Then you slide it in, and you. Put your glue down here on the collar and you push that up till everything's nice and tight. And that gives you uh, your reinforced throat and a way to put it in. You might think to yourself, well, then the only thing I can do is use a piece of PVC right here. That's the last thing in the world I would use myself. Uh, I'll show you how I do it. This piece of one by two happens to have perfect grain running the whole length of it so that it's nice and strong. I've had this thing bend at like a 30 degree angle without any concern. Here's the important part, is that this is shaved, this is for something else entirely, but this area is the perfect width to fit, not here, but in here, all right? And then these two pieces are shaped and sized to be a snug fit right there but just snug and the way this works of course is you see your swarm you get under it you bump it and you start bringing it down now the reason i don't want a snug fit here is because i want to be able to do that you know grab it dump it into the bucket bucket dump it into the nuke or whatever you're going to put the bees into. Okay, I had to run and get the netting. Uh, so bees are in the bucket here. You can dump them straight into the nuke like that. If you're going to have to move them any kind of distance or anything else, this is just a uh, dirty clothes bag. You can use a pillowcase or whatever else, but I find a dirty clothes bag works well because it has a nice mesh to it. Uh, the other thing you can do with this, think of all the classic pictures of the beekeeper with an upside down skep on a ladder in the tree retrieving a swarm. Well, this is your skep, only your skep's got a handle now. You can get up, if you can get there and you can shake a swarm this way, since a lot of swarms come down low, you can use this without a stick on it, works just as well. And I'm sure what you don't see in those pictures is that they probably have one of those square cloths in their back pocket that skep beekeepers used to use and you throw it over it. So be sure you take your uh, laundry bag along with you. But love this. Been using it for years. Works perfectly well for me. But Rich, I hear you say, what about a five gallon bucket? You can. I don't. And I'm not going to make one just to demonstrate it, but 
I would strongly suggest that if you do decide to make your swarm catcher out of a five gallon bucket, that you have your piece on the outside and that you cut a piece on the inside to reinforce it. Because unless you make sure that you always bump right here against the tree, you know, I'm not sure how, how the stresses are going to work. So uh, be smart and do a little reinforcement like this on it. And of course, the problem with something like this is that it's on this long stick and you can't take it off the stick if you do a simple trap like this. If you want to do something where you take a piece of PVC and, you know, drill sets of holes out here and zip tie a piece of PVC along here and use a stick like I did that you can pull out. Sky's the limit. Be as creative as you want to be. Let me know what you did. But uh, I just think you need reinforcement if you're going to use the bucket. Now something a little more interesting. I had I used this for a couple of years before I got the uh, five gallon bucket, and it works really well. What the work just happened here? Oh, there we go. This is called a swarm catcher ring. South Florida Bee Supply. That's what it's called. Interestingly enough, I just it's thirty dollars at South Florida Bee Supply. Uh, I just went on. Uh, both the Dodont's website and Man Lake's website, and I found nothing under swarm catcher ring, swarm catcher, anything of that nature. They don't have these. Uh, you can find them on some in some shops on Etsy. Better Bee has them. In case you were wondering what this little divot up here was, well, that was for that, and you anchor this on here like this. And what's so cool about this, let me get this tightened down, is after you've done your bump, you can close it. It's just a flick of the wrist. It's a couple of seconds to learn. Ready? Let's try that again. No, okay. Oh, in front of the camera. Okay. She wants me to do it in front of the camera. Oh, on the stick. No, on a shorter stick. Okay. I can't do it that way. I've practiced doing it one way, dear. I'm not sure I could do it that way. Um, this is your standard uh, closet rod. If you want to get yourself a big piece of that, you will have to whittle down the end. I'm not on there. There we go. Okay. Now, I'll see if I can do it this way. Ready? Oops. Well, it, hey, it did it in slow motion. How about that? <laughs> and, you know, once you get them cut, trapped in there, the tie down here is just a loop that uh, you're ready to go. You drop them, you know, into the nuke or the whatever box you're going to put them in. Zip. You're up here, and soup, there you go, you're closed. But of course, at the moment it's open, but if it was closed, that's what it would look like. They're pretty cool. I was a little surprised that neither Man Lake nor Dodont seemed to carry them, but whatever. They work. Now, the reason I went from this to the bucket was simply because I had no confidence in the strength of this ring if I had to bump a heavy branch. I've caught a number of swarms out of this uh, eastern red cedar tree behind me, and its branches are very rigid. You know, you bump the branch, the branch goes, excuse me, what? So that's it. Three different ways to hopefully catch a swarm out of a tree without going up a ladder. And if you like going up a ladder, my five gallon uh, water jug method still works fine because it's easy to take up the ladder with you and cover with uh, a pillowcase or a uh, dirty clothes bag or whatever.
there you go. Three different ways that you can uh, put something on a pole for retrieving a swarm. So this has been, this is Rich. This has been South Florida Beekeeping with Rich. Like and subscribe and have a great day, everybody.